Um, hi, my name's Erin Gamble. I'm from Hamilton in New Zealand, uh, and I am a author in KU. Uh, I have been studying KU since 2003, um, and I believe that was also the first year I met Hanji at Agashiku in Hamilton, where he was presenting uh, what's it? applications from Knife and Kappa. Um, which was great. I'll probably talk about that again later. Um, before that, I was, uh, I had a little bit of break from training, but my original training was in uh, Shotokan style karate uh, here in New Zealand, um, which I really loved, but I had scheduling conflicts with my studies. So I had to take a break from training for a number of years. Um, in order to finish my university degree and uh, when I was ready to go back to training the club wasn't there anymore so I was really lucky that a friend brought me along to um, the Hamilton uh, KU club at that time and uh, that started my KU journey. Uh, with me today is Hayden Spatcher from Christchurch and I'll let him talk about himself. Thanks. Um, yeah, I've been studying KU for more than 10 years, but officially joined the KU organization in 2010. Prior to that, I, as a kid, I did four or five years of karate, um, got through to a junior black belt level once the, the, the club closed down. So I took a bit of a break and, and one of the guys at my work was um, doing a tournament in Taekwondo and thought, oh, that looks like fun. So I went and joined up Taekwondo tournament uh, uh, club and uh, probably studied that for about 20 years. Um, and I was probably quite lucky. We were more, not so much a sport orientated club. Um, our main instructor was her background in karate and judo. So, and probably a little bit of a brawler back in his day. So we were quite focused on the stand up style of fighting, um, learn to kick hard, kick fast all that sort of stuff, but uh, we had our carpet and we'd, we'd learn them, we'd practice them, uh, but there's always that little bit missing and I started wanting a little bit more from what I was doing. So I started training with um, Johnny Kennedy, Johnny the Rocket, and uh, through that I got introduced to K. We went and did a seminar and Hunchy came over to New Zealand, came to Christchurch and was doing a seminar and uh, Turned up to that and thought, well, this stuff's pretty cool. Um, and he knows an amazing amount of techniques and, and stuff like that. So since then, started joining in, doing the bits and pieces until I officially changed over to KU completely back in 2010. So it's been quite an interesting ride all the way through. So when you first started, um, you were still doing your Taekwondo as well, so you were doing the TKD and the KU at the same time? Yeah, well, that's one of the things I really liked about KU. It wasn't something that was a style on its own. You could actually take the stuff that you know and add the KU techniques or principles to what you're already doing. And, and it would bring a lot of moments where you go, oh, I've done this before. And, and you suddenly see the technique there and you go, and that was probably one of the things that really maybe impressed me the most with Hunchy when I first met him, he'd, he would be doing a technique or something and goes, oh, this is out of a such and such carter. And, and then he'd show you the, the more form version of it. And you go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It was probably took quite a long time. I just I just thought, oh, he knows a million different moves. Um, but yeah, once you start to learn the KU and then start getting into the hat B, um, you can actually start working backwards and start to, Things like our carter that have done for years, been changed, you know, oh, you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right by our instructors with no actual reasoning what we're doing. Um, once you get to have B and you start putting the, those in, you can actually start to see things for yourself and slowly but surely this carter makes a little bit more sense in some places, so it's, it's great. Yeah, one of the things that... Um really struck me right from day one when I first started with um, Sensei Phil, because when I first started training with um, 
Copacan as it was back then. Um, I think Phil was still in the process of converting the club from Ryuka Kempa Karate to uh, KU. So I, I rather suspect that he was going home and revising through the week and checking the DVDs and then coming to class and um, barely staying ahead of everybody else. And I very much remember the first, very first thing I learned my very first night was Kiriwaza drill, kick drill. And um, then I was like, hey, they teach this to white belts on their first night. <laughs> Far out, <laughs> this is such a huge system. Um, but because I had paid a lot of attention to it and managed to put a lot of it into my memory, I found that the second class I turned up to I was helping the other lower grade students, the white belts and the yellow belts and the green belts to get through that drill themselves. So that little bit of previous experience, it helped me understand the drills better the first time I saw them, even though there was a lot more in them. And one of the things that I know that I particularly, it blew me away the first time I went to a gashku and I saw Hanshi present um, a kata because uh, as I said, it was my function cutter. And um, up until then, the club that I had been with previously, there was a small group of us that played a little game where we tried to figure out bone play. And the explanations were these huge convoluted explanations about how these little movements became this whole big sequence. And it really didn't make a lot of sense. And it didn't look a lot like the cutter. But what I really, really loved was here he was presenting kata applications and you could see the kata in the application. You could see <laughs> exactly the kata movements and that completely floored me. It's like, oh, it's not just all made up stuff, you know. It really is all there in the kata. And that was my first, you know, Hanchi likes to use the word BFO. And that was my first real KU BFO was this yeah, the kata actually have the applications in the kata without having to change all the movements around. So what was your first real low moment for KU? Well, I mean, probably pretty similar. We, we practiced such basic moves in the katas and, and doing them. And we would have, it basically become, oh, we have to do a kata to learn our next grade and get to our next grade and stuff like that. But the fun part was in the fighting, standing up, you know, just, and, and just sparring and, and fighting and kicking pairs and, and doing all those sort of things. Once started with the KU stuff, even just the simple things like a, a downward block and stuff like that, having an application for that, which, you know, back in the day we were told if someone front kick, you just low block like this. And I was saying, oh, I'm not 100% sure I'd be quite keen on doing that, but um, that's it is what it is. And I probably started off back when you never really question your instructor that they, and I've never had any bad instructors have always been good, but probably find that they probably didn't know any more than I knew at the time. And um, we were taught bit by bit, um, critiqued on what we did and how we did it, where our hand finished and how our fist was formed and all those sort of things were being changed, but never had the actual application for anything and, and yeah again some of the card applications that we made up or were told were there it was yeah pretty I suppose pretty, pretty common back you know as normal as someone attacks you from this side then you turn and someone attacks you from this side and then there's someone behind you all those sort of things um and yeah turning up to one of the Hanshi seminars and 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 said oh this this technique's out of for a bear hug and I'm looking at what he's doing and, and saying and he's saying it's you know in the carter and stuff like that and I think I can't see how that can be there you know I can't see that and then he should go through the moves and show you and it's like huh that's obvious that's exactly what that, those moves are for and, and that that what created the excitement and, and then you start delving into it start doing a little bit more and, and it gets more and more interesting and then you, you can just slowly now starting to be able to put together things using the KU principles of, of what techniques and kata are and train a lot of people and around the time and when they come up and go, oh, this is out of this kata, this is out of that kata. And it, it's 
yeah, it still blows me away how people can see so quick and so easily what the techniques are for. Where, you know, just learning that through KU has just been a, a huge, you know, huge experience, really. Yeah, one of the really cool things is that once you know the patterns, you see the patterns everywhere. So um, I remember there was a, an exercise I did where I went and looked at one of the Shotokan kata that I hadn't been high enough grade to learn during my Shotokan um, training. And I went through and I watched this, uh, I watched a, a black belt doing this on YouTube. And it's like, so obvious what the patterns are once you've learned how to see them yeah and that i think is one of the really cool things about ku is that we don't necessarily learn what to see we learn how to see it so that we learn what the principles are and you can see the levers and the um the turns and the openings and the how it's all going to tie together yeah and i think for me the key to that is the whole hat v because like you said with uh you know this, this is a bear hug and once you learn the escape it's really really obvious it's the hat v's that tie it all together it's the hat v's that put context into our kata and really help us to see where the applications are what the applications are doing and how those templates kind of tie together yeah 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 it is and i tell you what the, the funny thing is when you go back into your uh, i've been back a couple of times done things with the old style and and some quite high ranking instructors and whatnot and then they start going through here's a demonstration of what this moves for and you can look at it and go uh no nah, that's it's not so much that it's wrong but it's just there's no way that move you know they just don't have an idea they've made something up and it's just yeah it just doesn't quite gel when you look at it go it's a long way off what would actually you'd be wanting to do and stuff like that and, and that sometimes is a good thing and um, you go back and you can say to someone oh what if we were to do it off this technique or someone grabs your wrist or someone's got you in a choke from that and, and those things and that's a great experience because then you feel oh well for me personally, I feel quite knowledgeable in that respect when you go back to, you know, some other style where you're a high rank or, and there's lots of other high rank people around you and you, and you give them some information. And, and I think learning the KU, the hat V, as you say, it just allows you to see, rather than saying, here's technique number one, here's technique number two, it gives you the option to see what's going on and then you can start to relate it back to the habitual acts. Uh, and that's something I would never have put together without learning KU, without getting in, into the system. I mean, I really enjoy hitting, striking and, and all that. But then looking at the hat V and, and going through those drills and the principles and, and stuff like that is is exciting. It's, it's great and it's good to learn. So, yeah. yeah. And you really learn to fish for yourself, yeah, instead of having to have it all spoon fed to you. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. I mean, it's it's one of the biggest things that I probably picked up and learned from Hunchy. He would say is how you perform a technique is how you understand it, uh, and that's one of the things that's really changed what I do and how I've done it. Um, and it's not so much about changing the style of what you're doing, but it's exactly true. Once you actually understand what you're trying to do, you can get the emphasis and the force and and the technique in the areas where you're you need it and, it and it does make your carter and, and that look and feel a lot a lot better so i really enjoy that part of it it's good yeah the other thing i really like is the versatility um because like i'm 163 centimeters tall how tall are you hayden about 184 184 so you're a lot taller than me and one of the things i found with my original karate style with the shoulder cut everybody had to do everything the same way and for you and i being quite different physical shapes and sizes real life it just doesn't work that way the things i'm going to be able to duck under things much more easily than you you're going to be able to hammer down from above much more easily than me and until i learned ku i had never heard the word kenta before the variations yeah 
everything had to be done one right way. Or you failed, basically. It was this way or no way. And so what I really love is, is that versatility. And again, it ties back to the functionality of it. Because the functionality really is going to be determined by the physical state of each practitioner. So like I have I have age ranges five through 65 um, training with me here in Hamilton. Now, my five-year-olds, you can fold them up in a little ball and just about bounce them off the wall. My 65-year-old, not so much, but he still can make his techniques work. He just won't necessarily use all the same techniques as the five-year-olds, yeah? And that versatility is there in the system. Yeah. I found when I first started, it was the same sort of thing. It was one way, and that's the way you did it. And and to be honest, it was quite good to learn that way for me, in a small sense. I, I I was good at remembering templates and remembering one plus one equals two. I could do do that. When it comes to variations, I always struggled. I just well, I don't know them. And and coming to KU, that was one of the big things. Is we're doing a drill, and you and you grab a new partner, and they do it. The same but completely different and it, and it for a start it threw me quite a bit it's like oh you're not doing it right or am i not doing it right I, I need to change my technique to match what yours is and that was one of the things that um that took a little bit of me getting my head around but it's such a crucial thing because you can two people as you say different heights and sizes that comes into it but also they can do the same technique completely differently they can the way their arm swings or the way they they form a grab or which hands over top. Um, that is invaluable to learn and, and to be able to adapt because, you know, it is everyone jokes about saying it's, oh, you attacked me wrong, but that's pretty much how everything I did when we first started was, oh, I oh, know that's not how you attack, you have to attack like this. So when you start adding the things like the aggressive resistance and, and stuff like that, then you find that techniques don't actually work for that little bit. Um, and that, that comes from being regimented and doing everything the same way and, and having no variations. Because variations, it's basically how you learn. And if you can do it on one person, that's great. If you can do it on everyone, then that's awesome. And that's, as you said, sometimes you'll need to modify things to make it work against different people. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I learned, probably a little bit the hard way at the start, but learned um, and, and yeah, really value it. Something that's means that I know I've got some techniques and, and that, that work and I can do it on short people, tall people and everything in between. So it's great. Yeah, it kind of ties into that whole shuhari, yeah? You've got to be able to follow the rules, know the rules, understand the rules before you're ready to start breaking the rules and going yeah. into variations. Because particularly for beginners who have never done another style before, having everything done one way consistently makes life a lot easier for them the problem is that because they're all different shapes and sizes that one thing isn't going to suit everybody yeah well that's a it's just a great way of learning just to keep swapping partners around because i i would find myself you stay in your comfort zone to a large degree you, you get with a partner that's similar height size and you know and you start working together. And what I found in that sometimes is we'd actually be working the drill or the technique rather than the physical act. Um, and that's where, you know, when you start going through the case, you do the a bit of aggressive resistance so you get the technique to work and stuff like that. Um, and then you keep moving forward until you get to Rio Kubente and, and, and actually fighting amongst it. That's the bit because I do find Sometimes if you've done a few drills, you become either a little bit too passive or you, you're actually a little bit too compliant to the technique rather than the, the act that's happening. And, and when you start adding in aggressive resistance or, you know, and making it to and fro, it, it actually all sticks together. It's, it's a, a good experience, a good training, so. You know, I reckon one of the secrets to that is you don't have to train the whole drill when you're training the drill, yeah? So you you take, for example, the beginning of Kiriwaza where you've got that lapel seize, trap the arm, smack them in the neck. You can, you can go, what happens if it doesn't work? And you can build a whole lot of stuff up 
of that starting template. And you'll find that a lot of it comes back to other parts of the drill anyway, because of the way that those drills link similar templates, similar concepts for similar contexts, yeah? So yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the models that I always use is like, martial arts is like Lego. And we could do the Lego, the Lego fire engine and the, the Lego house and the Lego this. And the thing is that you want to be able to, yeah, you want to be able to make those. Those are your initial patterns. But then you want to be able to take all your Lego, put it in a box and assemble it however the heck works best for you. And um, I think it, it really, really supports that. Um, how did you find Tagumi? Because I, I don't know about Taekwondo. I don't know that much about it, but I know there's, there's nothing like that in Shotokan. At least there wasn't like 25 years ago. No, well, yeah, it is, it is quite a bit different. I mean, Taekwondo is, is mainly kicking and it's, it's, you know, you're getting distance and you're in kicking range. So it's been a lot of time training and kicking range, which as you know, is nowhere near punching, <laughs> clinching and range. So just getting in closer was a bit of a you know I could find my distance wasn't quite there and it, you get comfortable in what you know um when someone faces up and they're in the kicking stance or kicking range i i was comfortable as and there's no problem but when they start getting right up in your face and you're you know punching range or seizing and headbutt range right in close yeah it took a wee while for me to not have my head leaning back so far and try and keep out of the way um and yeah, it took some time to get used to it. But once you start getting used to the range and then dealing with that, you actually, again, start to become quite comfortable there. So instead of it being a stressful environment or stressful condition, you're actually feeling, yep, I can deal with this. If someone's right up in the face, you've got defense up, you, you know, you can deal with it. You're in that, that range. And that, that took a wee while coming from kicking range where I'm a, a long way away. Um, and, and to be honest, before KU, my self-defense plans were, well, I can kick pretty hard and I can kick pretty fast, so I'm going to be well sorted. But when you start getting in, you know, right in, someone grabs you, seizes you, you can't offload kicks. You've got a great distance. And, and that's where, you know, looking at the tagumis and then breaking them down as going into the entries and the exits of, of each drill and each each attack, it actually starts to give you options and, and stuff there. And, yeah, occasionally we can get some distance in between them where I can kick. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was a big learning curve. And again, it's it wasn't about learning something new. It was just learning, doing the same thing we've always done, but at a range that was realistic. Like we we obviously did lots of punches and other bits and pieces, but the range wasn't wasn't right. So yeah, we could deliver a lot of power, but it's not going to be effective because we could never get the range or didn't always get the range right because that's not something we would do and, and taekwondo would be to punch it's it's all regarding about kicking and, and that so yeah the the tagumis have been yeah a great learning curve but again there's so much as you said there's so much you can add into them it's just take one drill and then that can you can go down a big wormhole exploring so many things on each one um, yeah. and that's that's probably what becomes most exciting rather than, you know, I was always in the term of let's learn this drill. Yep, cool. Learn that. Let's learn the next one. Yep, we're ready for grading. Let's do the next one, the next one. Um, but with the KU, you can just link things together. You can actually start exploring options. You can get someone to attack and then not not do what you want them to do. And, and all of a sudden you're starting to create, you know, some reality in it and, and actually something that's, functional and if if you are in a self-defense situation that's actually functional that you know how to deal with something that's gone wrong because you've done it before you can just deal with it it's not a problem when you when you're used to doing something and have someone compliant and everything always works and you do it for real and it doesn't work that's when you're in danger because you're stuck you don't know what to do and, and i think that's for me personally the biggest thing that i've learned through the ku is is yeah, just the variations on how to flow from one bit to the next. If something's, as I said, self-defense, if something's going to go wrong, there's 100% chance it will. Um, and just having the skill set so you can keep moving and adapting, you know, grab that great big toolbox and pull out whatever tool you need when when's required. And that's 
that's probably the thing I found most exciting and rewarding about learning and, and studying KU now is um, not so much learning new drills, learning new techniques. It's just now the stuff that I've done for years I can actually use in a functional manner. Yeah, um, and that's a that's a big thing. That's yeah, spent years going up and down the floor, up and down the halls, doing techniques and doing stuff, and and yeah, it's it's good now to have some functionality to it rather than just the form option. So that's great. Yeah, um, what I like about Tagumi, I think it helps you drill that functionality that you were talking about, yeah? Because we're basically doing the same little sequence again and again and again. The danger is if you let it become just a pattern that you're doing by rote. And yeah. um, it can be it can be fun if you wanna if you wanna play with your partner a little bit, you let them fall into that pattern and then you break it. <laughs> Yeah. And it's a really good training exercise for everybody. Um, I've, I've had a lot of fun playing with, with Tagumi like that. Um, but also when you get into the, okay, we've got the basic pattern, what are we going to do? Take your basic Tagumi, your basic pattern, and just flow so much stuff off of it, which is, is, is really, really cool. But one of the things that I have had a lot of fun doing is going back and looking at some of the kata in particular that I learned in my Shotokan days and looking at those with my KU eyes, yeah? And seeing the patterns that I never recognized before, seeing the applications that I would never have been able to see before. And even um, applying that to some of the first kata that I learned in KU, it's really worthwhile going back you know, there might have been a kata that you learned and you didn't really like it, so you haven't really done it much for the last 10 years. Then you go back and look at it again and go, hey, there's some really cool stuff in here. Because in that 10 years, your understanding has developed so much more, yeah? Yeah, most definitely. You go back, and, and I've, I've done it a few times, I've been back into our club and stuff like that, and we've gone through some of the drills and, and things, and you start to see things and go, why are you guys not picking this up? It's, it's blatantly obvious, but the similar to me, unless you're told or you know what you're looking for, or you have the formula to work things out, it, you don't pick things up. You just, yep, this is, we've done this, now we'll do this. It, it's just part of training and part of what you did. And, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy going back and learning and doing other bits with our club every now and again, because it's not so much that, know more than what they do or anything like that but yeah you have that formula that you can actually just start to work backwards through and go start to look at some of the techniques and go well actually this is you know if someone's holding the wrist this is breaking out through here and this is doing that and then they start to look and then you both learn everyone's you learn a lot from that scenario when you go back and add add those bits in because as you say, everyone has a different interpretation on how things are, and someone will say something, and, and that to me goes, Oh, I haven't thought of that. And that's I enjoy that stuff as well because I, I spent so many years doing stuff with this is the way, and that's that's how it is. Um, so it's great when you can come up and have different variations and, and even look at stuff that you, that you knew before and then add the variation to it. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's one of the things that I really appreciate about teaching as well, because when you're learning for yourself, once you get past the everything must be done in the same pattern, you pick the stuff that works for you, for your body size, for your body type, for your strengths. And the thing with teaching is that now you've got the responsibility to help other people with their body size and their strengths and weaknesses. And, and their level of knowledge. And I think that it helps expand so much because you have to think, what would I do if I was 180 centimeters tall? What would I do if I was a little five-year-old and an adult picked me up? <laughs> you know, that sort, of, that sort of stuff where you suddenly now, you have to think beyond what works for you into what works for other people. And then that also helps you with your defense because then you come up with, well, if that works for other people, then other people might try it against me. Come at me. Let's give it a go. Let's see how it works. So 
which is a really fun um, thing to do to, to um, come up with these variations for different body sizes and then test them to see if they're working. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And as you know, when you're teaching, you learn a lot just teaching because you'll say to someone, I'll grab them by the wrist and they can grab the completely different way to what you've got. Uh, you know, I know what I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach this and I'm going to teach this and I'm going to teach this. And then they grab the wrist around a different grip and a different angle. You can't, you know, so you've got to look at that and go, okay, well, let's make this technique. We'll change it. We'll use this technique and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons I really enjoy teaching is to learn those sort of things is because everyone does things differently and, and you know, you can't, it's when it comes to physical acts, you can't say, no, that's not how you're going to get attacked because people are different in the way they do. Someone grabs you by the lapel and the hands different, you know, different grip or different grab. Um, that's one of the great things to learn and, and experience. So, yeah. It is, a, it is a rewarding option teaching, so. I know, I know I asked you this question while we were paused, but I'm gonna ask you again, because I actually think this is a really good one for this discussion. So what's your favorite thing about KU? What's, what's the thing that keeps you with it? Uh, it's actually a hard thing. One of, I mean, it's just, it's endless, the learning. So you, whatever you focus on, you can learn and it's not, I've learned it now that it's done. You, it just continues on. And that's one of the things I really like about the KU. It allows you to explore all your passions and interests. Um, and I've one mentioned one of the things I really probably learned more than anything else was about the connectivity and, and, and drills, keeping contact um, in competition, sparring and what, whatnot. The most dangerous bits initiating the move, either getting in or getting out, is that, that first contact is where you're most vulnerable. Same in self-defense as, as well. And, and how I I always used to train is someone would throw a punch, you'd, you would engage and you'd disengage and, and whatnot. But the KU stuff, learning to stay connected or someone grabs you and, or you're initiating someone to grab you so you've got control of that limb or that, that person, um, that's exciting and it's interesting. And it, it also, you know, going to the ground fighting and, and, and grappling, one of the things that I never learned or never knew about was just trying to keep connected to someone and, and keep with them. Um, I was always get in and get out. I'd get in, try something, didn't work, I'd get out of the way. But when, when you start understanding what you're trying to achieve and, and, and a lot of the KU drills really work for this, the, the zagumis, all, all that, it comes through is just keeping contact, keeping connected. You can feel where they're going to move. That, so it creates a vulnerability or an area to attack. Um, and that's one of the things I really enjoy, really like about KU, because you can actually become into some full-on sparring, as it were, without the impact of, you know, from a kicking out, you kick someone's elbow, that actually really hurts. Whereas the KU, you can get right into the competition of it and, and a real challenge with your partner, but you walk away and, you know, you're not covered in bruises and you, you can live to fight another day. And it, 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 that's exciting. That's, that's great fun. And, that's probably one of the things I really enjoy and like the most about KU is just there's so much there you can learn and, and if you want to add the competitive element to your partner then yeah you just keep you keep going with that if you want to just learn the technical side of it and be nice and slow and relaxed and just focus on technique that's there as well so it it does cover everything that I like and everything I want in, in a style and art. I think because it focuses on principles and templates that is very very portable you know you can take your aikido and relate your ku principles to that you can take your taekwondo and relate your um ku principles to that you can you can relate them to pretty much any martial art you can relate them to european wrestling if you want to because let's face it there's not that much difference between a lot of the moves in european wrestling and um and uh, jiu jitsu you know the holds are the holds the, the, the human body only works and bends in certain ways and anything beyond that you either get locked up or uh, things start to start to give a bit um and so yeah that versatility i really really like the versatility i really like that 
you know, I, I said before that, you know, karate is a bit like Lego blocks, but you can, you can clamp Meccano onto those Lego blocks as well as you want to. You, you can put just about anything together to really um, find what works for you, what works best for you. And the, the depth is just incredible um, because it's not just learn these set drills and when you can go through the motions that's it you pass you're going to get it but you know that's that's not it learn learn these set moves means you're ready to learn what they actually are, are useful for now you know it's, it's memorizing the sequence is nothing applying the techniques is everything and that's that's what i really love about it it's it's useful it does something it's not just um, a sequence of pretty movements to um, to get a tick in a box, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's one of those great things. I remember, probably shouldn't say, but one of the early Kashifus I went to and, and someone asked about one of the drills, one of the bigger drills. And I remember Wolfgang, Sensei Wolfgang saying, I don't know the drill, but I can make every one of those techniques work. And I was thinking, oh, that's odd. Some are high rank, you know, doesn't know the whole drill. It wasn't until a bit later on it started to work out. It's not about learning the drill, it's about learning, making the techniques work and, and having the knowledge and, and understanding the principles as, as the human body. So style is irrelevant, um, as you just mentioned. And then you're looking at the, the hat bees, the habitual acts of physical violence. It's when you join those two together, then you've got everything you need. And, and um, yeah, the drills are there to help you practice everything that you know within a short period of time, but it's not about learning the drill. And, and that for me, it was probably a big, big thing too, because I've come from a style where, like, learn drill number one, drill two, yeah, you know, and you go through that. But in the KU, and I think that's what, whether you learn the drills or not, is is good. It's learning the techniques in those drills and then making them work. And I think that's that's what probably makes it exciting and fun because getting something to work is what you're trying to achieve. That's the outcome you want to want to get to. Is someone's attacked you a physical act and you've controlled or you, you've kept yourself safe and you've made a technique work that you want to work, whether that's controlling them or finishing them off or whatever you need to do. Um, so yeah, it's, it's exciting, it's great. Yeah, it's a lot like having one of those index files full of cards, yeah? Some of us file our cards in a little bit different order to others, but we've all got, we've all got the same thing in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, I think it's probably time to wrap things up. Um, so how are things in Christchurch these days? Yeah, not too bad. Weather's still good, nice and warm. Um, but no, it's, I mean, obviously worldwide things with COVID have, have stopped a lot of people training, you know, or going overseas and doing stuff. So it's same here as everywhere else and around the world, but yeah. gotta make the best of what, what's available. Um, and yeah, we're still training hard, still training all the time. So hopefully everyone else around the world is doing the same. Absolutely. Um, and you know, things could always be worse. We could be in Auckland. <laughs> You're pretty close to Auckland, so you better watch out. They might spread down. We're thinking, yeah. we're thinking of building a wall. <laughs> we're, Particularly we're in a completely different, different island, so we should <laughs> shut the shut the transit coming no one no one flying into the south island yeah 14 day isolation before you come here cool oh well thank you hayden for the discussion and um hopefully hopefully there's been something of interest in here for somebody out there anyway um it's it's always cool one of the best things about ku is the people i mean we say we say all the all the stuff about the actual system and stuff and that's awesome but you meet the best people in ku as well and from such diverse backgrounds so hopefully there's somebody out there that is going to find something of use from uh, our little discussion oh, thanks for talking to me and uh yeah thanks cool hopefully we'll see you soon thanks okay thanks Aiden. Yeah. Bye, bye bye